got nothing to do. I said there's so much history, so much of everything here. This is the um, convict graves here. Yeah. See the mould? Yeah, okay. yes. They're the mass graves. Yeah. Yeah. They're the mass graves. They're the mass graves. This is a cunny. I've, I've read one of um, Colin McCullough's uh, books that was run about three years ago. Oh, well, yeah. mm. Waters, an old English word yes, for lots of water. Yes, this is the main street where they used to live. You saw it on the old. Upper slaughter, outer slaughter. Yes. Then this is behind golf here, course down is, here. Used to be called oh. Turtle Bay. Now we've had three settlements. And that's on the old prison over there, there where the walls are. The oh. first settlement of colonies. They lived, lived here for some 200 years, estimated. <coughs> Population estimated around 3,000 people. They all left the same time. Three reasons. We missed the. Uh, Hmm? We miss the the ship comes in on the fifth of December. Okay. okay, this is Kingston Pier, Norfolk Island. And uh, the history of this place is that the convicts were loaded into longboats and they rode out to the supply ships to bring in the food and sometimes the convicts were drowned because in rough weather the longboats would turn over the convicts had a ball and chain around their legs and they would just instantly drown so a lot of convicts drowned here my last day here in Norfolk. It's a lovely sunny day. And I'll take you around other areas of Norfolk. That's a museum. Beautiful place, Norfolk Island. Relaxing, the locals are very friendly. Beautiful place with a horrible history of cruelty and murder. Okay, this is where the longboats were kept, and they always had a guard there to guard the place so the convicts wouldn't take off in a longboat. That's an example of a longboat there. And there's another one here. It's the Norfolk Island Museum. This is the old convict flour mill. Men were treated very badly here to make flour for bread. Worked long hours. Just walk in here. That's what it looks like inside. I don't know whether you can see it properly. We walk over to here, and up here is the doctor's residence. And the hospital is just next door, so we'll go over there now. There's a well. house. Now 
now we're going to have a look in the hospital. Another lovely sunny day. So we're still in the ruins of the old convict hospital. There's mum. Don't know whether there'll be any ghosts in here. But we were told on the tour yesterday that this room here is where they put uh, the convicts who uh, went a bit insane after being in solitary confinement for a long time. And then when their senses came back, they were sent back to over there in the jail. Excavating from here to the end of the right wing, having the plans of the jail, they immediately found, and I'm standing in, the remains of the guards' toilet. The guards using the toilet walked along the hallway here, opened the door and stepped down. The urinal covered the entire wall area here, one closet in the left corner and one closet there in the right hand corner. This originally was plastered and whitewashed, so it was of a good standard in those days. Not so good over here. If you'd like to come now over to the right wing. The right and left wings were for those who were Irish political prisoners, head to head with the military at all times, those with the chips on their shoulders, those that had an attitude problem, they were housed in the right and left wings. And if you're in the right and left wings, they have deliberately uh, restricted your area of movement. <laughs> Not much. As true. soon as you walked out of the two foot wide door of your cell, you're in the exercise yard. This is it. Oh, this is yeah. their exercise yard. This was a 10 foot high wall. All you've seen was the sky. The measurements in the old measurements, folks, is 5 foot 6, 7 foot 6, 9 foot. Nine foot accommodated four men sleeping one on top of the other on a two foot six inch wide timber pallet. Oh. The man on the bottom, his pallet actually came in contact with the timber floor. You've only got a little narrow gap in here to climb up onto your bunk. Whenever you went in at the end of the day into your cell, firstly, the prisoners went down to the end room, which is called the turnkey's room. The turnkey's room was the storage of locks and chains and manacles, etc. But also in the turnkey's room were hanging up on, on hooks were black peters. They called it a black peter, a portable metal toilet. It was a portable metal object with a lid on it, and you had to take, everybody had their own black peter, you had to take it into the cell at night, and if you used it as a toilet facility, of course you had to clean it at daylight before you went to work. 1,724 men were here and next door combined in 1851. What are you going to do with the day's effluent? Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh, they emptied no. it into the sea. Come on, I'll show you now. Oh. Uh, at daylight, the men would come out of wing number one. They would assemble here. The overseers would be waiting to tell you what you were going to do to that day. Then you marched out the walkway. Block two's turn, block three, block four, block five. Now all these men that I've shown you in these cells so far have gone to work. They're going to work seven days a week. But this is the worst part coming over now, the back area. The men don't leave total isolation. Okay, this is where the governor used to live. But now it's made into a chapel. And 
says 1835 Major Anderson 50th Regiment Commandant so this used to be where the Commandant lived but there's a church inside its well it's All Saints Kingston St Barnabas Chapel I'm driving on the wrong side of the road but I'm just going to pull over in here and film the barracks there's the other side of the jail there okay, this is another part of the commandant's place In there. Okay, we're coming up onto the barracks now. This is the soldiers' barracks. So that's the soldiers barracks and now we'll go on to the cemetery. Here's some cattle. Good morning, good morning. Cars are allowed to run free around Norfolk. The rule is that we have to give way to all the cows. Anyway, we'll keep going up here to the cemetery. There's the modern cemetery and these are all uh, buildings from the time of the convicts and where the wives of the, some of the soldiers lived. This is one of the most haunted houses in Norfolk. There was a house fire there and a few deaths and also a baby was thrown down in the well. Morning. This is the golf course where we were yesterday playing nine holes of golf. Nice golf course. I play dreadfully, of course. Okay, straight ahead here we've got a tourist bus at the cemetery. the bus. We'll go on straight ahead. And we'll just pull over here. Under the tree. 
Now just up ahead there's a place called Bloody Bridge. Bit of a story to that. It's when a convict overseer had a few convicts with him and they were building a bridge. Uh, the overseer was very cruel to them and all of a sudden the convicts snapped and had enough of the cruelty and killed the overseer and and uh, placed him amongst the uh, the bridge, cemented him up and the only way they were found out is when they saw blood trickling out of the bridge and they knew that, uh, I mean the soldiers and the commandant knew that uh, something awful had happened and so the uh, convicts were executed. So that's Bloody Bridge and we'll go to the convict cemetery now and just have a quick look around there. Okay, here we're coming at the cemetery here. Sorry for the bumping, walking downhill at the moment. Now this mound here is Murderous Mound. Uh, it's where there was a mutiny on the island and several soldiers were killed by convicts. And these convicts were uh, executed and then just dumped in a, a mound or a hole and just buried here without any markings. Um, the ground was consecrated a number of years ago, blessed. But that's what happened to the, I think there was 14 convicts that were buried here on top of one another, just dumped here for being mutinous. Okay, we'll just walk through here. I was here the other evening and it wasn't very pleasant bit scary. Uh, these little stones that are out of the ground there are um, grave markings but they haven't got any uh, names on them at all. Uh, there's a few up here and these big ones here there are soldiers that were drowned or killed. Some of these gravestones have been touched up by black paint so it, the writing can be read. So it's uh, in memory of Bridget Costello. Uh, There's a surgeon who died, age 45. Uh, I think the oldest convict that ever survived was uh, 102, I think. But all the other convicts really didn't even make it over 30. Here's another one. Some died very young. Most of these are soldiers here. Um, the convicts that were well behaved also got a, uh, a stone, marked stone, because the uh, commandant was uh, pleased with uh, their behaviour, so they were respected by um, getting a marked stone. But if you uh, if you weren't well behaved then you didn't really get a stone at all or you got an unmarked stone. There was a, there's also children that are buried here that didn't survive very long. Just uh, here lies the body. I think it says Taz Kingsington. So yeah, there's um, stones like this in the ground that have no markings. And um, there's others that are well marked because they're either soldiers or convicts that were well behaved. And then beyond there, where those people are, is the modern day cemetery where uh, descendants of Fletcher Christian, uh, the mutiny on the bounty, um, their ancestry 
or descendants are through there, sorry. So there's a lot of um, gravestones with Christian and also from other mutineers who are involved. Anyway, that's the cemetery, the convict part. And uh, this is the end of the video because uh, I'll be heading off home to Sydney, catching the uh, 2.30 flight and arrive in Sydney about uh, 4 o'clock and then it's back to work tomorrow. So I've had a wonderful week here and um, who knows, might come back next year. It's a beautiful place if you ever want to come here. Uh, there's no internet service, no mobile phone service. You just take a nice good book with you and just relax. Nice quiet place. And the, as I said before, the locals are very, very friendly. These are the uh, houses for the wives of the soldiers, the officers. Cows again. Coming up to the barracks. Uh, this house here is where the priest lived. That's where the uh, priest lived. That's it. Norfolk Pines in front. Coming up to the Commandant's place. Anyway, that's Norfolk for you. There's other uh, nice places on the other side of the island, but this is the uh, convict side. Hope you enjoyed the tour and the information.